I waited a whole week before I make this video because I want to get an accurate understanding of different Chinese sources on how they see this new Trump presidency and also his cabinet pick. And I would say the overall atmosphere is pretty positive. And in this video, I'm going to tell you guys why. And also towards the end of this video, I've been thinking for a long time and there's something that's been troubling me. I want to share with you guys towards the end of the video and see what you guys think. OK, I'm going to start by sharing a small section of Professor Jin's video. He posted it two days ago on why Trump's second term is good for China in the long run. Let's take a listen. 我们是外国人啊，所以我们关心他的对外政策。对外政策，我估计啊，When it comes to foreign policy, I think U.S. will pursue an isolation strategy. Before World War One, U.S. used to pursue a strong isolation national strategy, but after the end of World War Two, U.S. started to pursue a globalist internationalism strategy when approaching foreign policy. And I think Donald Trump wants to return the U.S. to that isolation route. Overall, I think Trump aims to reduce the responsibility of America on the global stage and through that reduce fiscal burden on the country. Under his administration, Trump will dump the financial burden of many global issues onto U.S. allies around the world. So that can be bad news for many U.S. allies. They need to pay protection fees to the Americans. In addition, I'm pretty sure that he's going to launch trade war against not just China, but against the rest of the world. According to his previous speech, he wanted to charge 20% tariff on the rest of the world and 60% on China. This will be a bloodbath to many international businesses. So we're going to see a step backward in globalization. Furthermore, his plan on quitting international organization like Paris Climate Agreement and also organization like the World Health Organization institution that deal with issues like transnational crime, cyber crime, space program. Trump is likely to quit many of those as well. So many of the transnational corporation will face fatter. Of course, our focus is on two main issues. First one is the Ukraine war. Trump promised to bring a quick end to the Ukraine war, but I think this is extremely difficult. I think President elect Trump underestimate the complexity of the problem. Sure, I think he's going to facilitate and pressure the two parties. Russia and Ukraine into negotiation. But can the problem be solved? Um, I, I don't know. He make a lot of promises, but no one knows the details. Let me guess what he's going to do. On the one hand, he's going to promise Russia that he will not let Ukraine into NATO because this is the principal demand of Russia. For Ukraine to maintain neutrality, that Ukraine must remain above a zone between NATO and Russia. I think this is something President Trump can promise because US is the dominating power in NATO. This is, however, going to be a huge psychological shock to the Ukrainians. The second compromise will probably be quietly amid the annexation of Crimea and eastern Ukraine to be Russian's territory and to pause the conflict according to the current front line to create a 38 parallel in Ukraine. This is one of the more likely outcome of the Ukraine war, at least under Trump's leadership, that is. Trump is likely going to ask Russia not to cross the Dnieper River and start to capturing territory to the west of the river. This can be used as a calming factor to surrounding countries, letting them know that Russia will not move forward towards their borders. I think those will be Trump's main approach. However, can Trump achieve peace? I'm not so sure. The US establishment, the deep state. 
they might not agree with his plan. Many European countries will also be against the strategy. So this call for stopping the war in 24 hours. <laughs> I, I highly doubt it. But let's wait and see. Now, the second issue, the crisis in the Middle East. That's what worries me. I believe Trump might make the problem worse. To me, it seems like Trump has even closer relationship with Israel. So during his previous presidency, he moved the U.S. Embassy of Israel to Jerusalem. This is against the general consent of the U.N. resolution. And I believe this time he will support the Israeli even more. This will put huge amount of pressure on the Iranians and its current government. So Iran must be on high alert. In addition, Trump will pressure countries in the Middle East like Saudi Arabia and Kuwait to stand with Israel. So generally speaking, his presidency will be in favor of Israeli, but will it be successful? I'm not so sure. Iran will resist and other Arab states might not follow US lead this time. So there are many uncertainty in Ukraine war and Gaza conflict. Many of us Chinese audience want to know how Trump 2.0 will affect China-US relationship. My personal opinion is this. Trump's presidency in the short term will be a disadvantage for China. But in the long term, it is extremely in favor of China. Ha 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 ha. 长期对中国很有利。我是这么一个看法。well, this is what I have been saying all the time. But let's see how Professor Jin explained this, okay? Because in the immediate future, Trump already said it. He will put something like 60% tariff on all Chinese imports and potentially more tariff on other imports as well. So that's a lot of pressure on our economy. But in the long run, He's turning the U.S. into a solo fighter, a lone fighter. He's going to upset many of his allies, punishing U.S. allies in the trade war as well. This is going to be a huge advantage for the Chinese in the coming years. My opinion is that China is not afraid of a one-on-one -on -one battle against the Americans. When it comes to real productivity output, China is way ahead of the United States. And it has been that way since 2014. And that's information straight out from the CIA. And if you focus on manufacturing production, it is just way far ahead of the United States. Our steel production is something like 20 times the amount of the American. Our ship manufacturing capacity and output is over 200 times that of the United States. There's no comparison. So if this is just a fight between China and the US, we are not afraid of the Americans. But if US try to rally its allies and contain China together, that would be a much difficult challenge for China, especially if the US weaponized many international institutions. The good thing about Trump for China is that he doesn't like to work with his friends and allies. <laughs> He's quitting all those international organizations giving up his positions on international stage. So this is good for China. So Trump 2.0 will affect China more severely than other countries for sure. But I believe China can handle the pressure. So that was a short section from Professor Jin in his video, got a lot of view in China. And he also talked about domestic issue in United States, which I'm going to talk about later in this video. But I want to expand on this part regarding US-China foreign policy, okay? Um, every geopolitical commentator in China has been talking about Trump's presidency and cabinet pick over the past few weeks. and. The talk is still ongoing, but let me tell you guys the overall narrative here, okay? The cabinet pick members are all strangers to 
China. I think many of the Americans here, uh, the political commentators are also surprised by there are so many people that are unknown to them, not experienced. Uh, and that include also uh, people like Marco Rubio, because those are all I will consider unexpected picks. Now, the second thing, this cabinet member pick seems to prioritize on loyalty to Trump and not prioritize on their experience or their own agendas or thinkings. Yes, there are several Chinese hawks in there, but they don't have much of a track record. So when it comes to planning and executing plans, I, I think they are just amateurs. So there's a lot of uncertainty, okay? Especially when you consider Trump like to fire people during his first term and with Elon Musk by his side, this might as well happen again. So we don't know who is going to stay till the end and do anything during the presidency. So it's yeah, it's too early to tell. And finally, is that the US domestic politics will become more unstable. And this cabinet seems to set up in a way to combat domestic issue like immigration, illegal immigration and work agenda and not exactly built to engage in international relationship. That's what most of the geopolitical commentators said in China at the moment. Let me try to um, use two graphs uh, to explain my thoughts and see if you guys understand what I mean. Okay, uh, let me show a triangle right now on the screen. I know many channels here in the West has different opinion on what Trump is and capable of doing, right? If you look at this triangle at the three corners are the extreme scenario. OK, there are three extreme scenarios. So first one on top, let's say Trump is very successful in making uh, America great again. And, you know, all the plans and strategy he's going to implement is going to be successful. OK, that, that is an extreme end of looking at what he's going to achieve in the next four years. Uh, the bottom two, I would say that on the left side, we can also see uh, a Trump that fell miserably in his term. You know, many of the strategy he's going to push forward is either going to be unsuccessful or meet with a lot of uh, resistance from Congress and Senate, even though Republicans have a majority in Congress and Senate. I, I see those majority to be a little bit fragile, to be honest. And then the third extreme scenario that I know some of the other channel is suggesting is that Trump is just another puppet establishment president and he's going to do nothing major really he's going to spend majority of his time you know playing golf or sitting on a golden toilet bowl or something like that and he's just not going to do anything so that's three extreme scenario and i will say that all my audience uh, have opinion kind of within the surface area of that triangle right if you ask me personally, uh, my prediction is going to be leaning towards Trump is being honest uh, in trying to fix some of the problems in US, but uh, he probably won't be successful in changing US over the next four years. Um, so I'm leaning towards uh, a Trump that's not going to be straight off failure, but not going to be uh, meeting all the expectation of his voters. I think this is a fair assessment. But if I am to look from just the Chinese perspective, OK, if I'm just putting myself in China's shoes, this is how I will look at it. All right. If Trump is just a puppet of the establishment, which I don't think it is. Because, but if I look from strictly a Chinese perspective, if Trump is just a puppet of the establishment and didn't do or even try to do anything significant during his second term, a lot of people in the US will start to lose faith in the American political system, the so-called democracy, because they will feel that they are being lied to or cheated on again, right? This is not how the way I see it. I don't see Trump as a pure 
puppet because as you can see there's many signs for example his uh, appointment uh, for Matt Gaze for attorney general is meeting a lot of resistance right so if he's just a deep state why not just follow the this state you know deep state nominee and just appoint those people he shouldn't meet so much resistance so there's clear fracture even within republican or from his nominee so there's a sign that he's not really belong to the deep state or puppet at all but let's assume that he is a puppet okay and didn't do shit and change anything during his term then you know americans will feel cheated again and that will seriously disturb the um unity of the nation moving forward which I guess if I am just speaking from a Chinese perspective, that is good for China because um, that will mean that the Americans will not be able to come after China effectively because you can go after someone when your backyard is on fire, right? Now, if you look at a scenario of a successful Trump, a successful Trump has to also come to terms with many issues regarding foreign policy because you can't be considered successful if the rest of the world hates you more, right? So this means that he will have to fight a lot of the deep state original agenda and policy that has been installed and implemented across the world over the past few decades and which to me is almost an impossible task to be honest i mean impossible within four years let's let's be honest but if he becomes successful or or if from our standard considered to be successful if there's you know 10 different uh problems he's able to fix eight of them or nine of them then us will be i will say much less aggressive and oppressive to the global south which is a win to everyone including china because facing these very core issues domestically in us also means that us will be coming more uh, acceptable i'm not sure if you guys can build an overall picture here when it comes to foreign policy so you cannot be a super oppressive colonial power and expect you know even at this moment to fix relationship outside and within uh united states at the same time that's not possible so a successful trump means that it will be less imperialistic everywhere else so my point here is that in order for us and trump to be successful in the next four years it need to come to terms with many different parts of the global south and also with his allies, which means that it should be a tension reducing factor. Now, if Trump fell miserably in the second term, okay, it doesn't matter if his uh, plans uh, doesn't work or meet too many resistance from different parties, people, uh, Americans have to understand that the things Trump want to do or claim that he will do if it fails, it will boomerang hardcore back to the US and make many of the problems even worse, all right? Which means that US will enter a more severe level of internal chaos and instability and social unrest. So I guess if I'm Chinese, I can see also that is good for China because, you know, uh us will also have less energy and focus on containing china so that's a good thing as well so as you can see the trump presidency no matter what the outcome is it will be good for china especially in the long run i would say yeah however though when it come to domestic issue here in the united states things get more complicated and it's something that i want to ask my audience opinion on it i thought about it for a long time and i'm gonna draw some points here see if you guys um, agree with me okay first however i'm gonna bring you just a short video from professor stern okay uh i think this short video is very interesting to put the whole picture together take a look first 
I want to talk about the partnership between Donald Trump and Elon Musk. Donald Trump and Elon Musk share many similar characteristics. Look at this way: both Donald Trump and Elon Musk became famous and successful in area that had nothing to do with politics, international relationship, or state management, and this gave them and many their supporters. The illusion that because they were successful in certain business, they must be able to achieve some kind of greatness in all other areas as well. When it comes to Donald Trump and Elon Musk, it seems that they often only use their personal instincts as a primary factor when approaching political issues. If you look at U.S. politics, besides Rockefeller. It is rare to have the kind of what we call old money billionaires who choose to involve directly in politics at a high level. Usually, what they do is to nominate or hire a proxy candidate to do their bidding. This is because most intelligent wealthy elites understand there's a need to be a certain check and balance. And it is often necessary to separate political power from money, at least on the surface. Elon Musk used to say that he doesn't care about power because he has money. This kind of logic works well as an entrepreneur, because being rich allows him to explore technological fantasy and dreams. However, when it comes to politics, I would say many people. That belong to、uh, the opposite side will fear him because regular method will not work on Elon Musk. He's a person outside of the regular constraint. If you go after Musk with fines and fees, he doesn't care. He's rich. He also does not need anyone else to empower him in politics. Because to Elon Musk, he feels like his authority came from the president Donald Trump and the voters who supported him due to his partnership with Trump. So when we're talking about Elon Musk in the government, especially when it comes to the important decision making, will make compromise almost impossible with the rivalries. Elon Musk might approach politics like he pro- approach business as a CEO and biggest shareholder, completely dictating the decision-making body. Of course, this is not entirely his fault. I would say that many problems U.S. face today is because the establishment elites make many mistakes over the decades and did not really compromise with the American people. The ruling elites of the United States over the years failed to understand a Confucian term, doctrine of the mean, 中庸之道 Oh my God, this is a difficult term <laughs> for me to translate. I think when it comes to、um, politics and state management, it is to always not go for the extreme. And to always try to find balance and harmony within the state management body. So when it comes to both Donald Trump and Elon Musk, their actions, their approach to politics, might trigger severe backlash from the establishment elite, which might lead to uncontrollable consequences. Let's put it that way. Okay, let's continue. I think what I'm saying here is the collective wisdom of the evolution of Western civilization, and for people who go against this norm, usually will not end up well. And this will be proven right because from time to time there will be people like Elon Musk who insists on walking a different path, and will probably face the consequence of their decision. One more thing to look out for is the partnership between Donald Trump and Elon Musk itself. If you look at Donald Trump and Elon Musk closer, both of them have extreme desire towards total control. 
They worked well together as campaign partner, playing their respective roles, pushing campaign agenda effectively. However, now they are in power. I wonder how will the power be divided? Will they still see eye to eyes over the next four years? Because both of them are not, I will consider individuals who are willing to share power. Will their relationship last throughout Trump's second term? It will be interesting to see. Okay, do you guys understand what Professor Sun is trying to say here? Because Professor Sun has been spending the last several days, okay, talking about U.S. domestic politics. Let me see. I think my older generation audience might understand what I'm referring to better than the younger generation. Here we go. Now, political power, no matter the political system, it condenses and and centralizes into just a few people during turbulence era, right? And it dis dispenses during peaceful time. And during peaceful time, there are often、um, relationship built at a local level between politician and wealthy oligarchy. This is universally the same, okay? No matter where you are, we're talking about. And during this period, this local politician and wealthy elite do not want the central government. They do not want the president to intervene to disrupt them, making you know the changing right. Even when those profit models are harming the country or the empire. In the long run, from a macro perspective, okay. Now, U.S. is facing problem today. Everyone can 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 tell, right? And you have people like Trump and RFK and Elon Musk that really want changes. At least to me, it feels like they generally want changes. And I would say many Americans, no matter if you are anti-China or pro-China or just here for the theatrics. Speaking as American myself, I consider myself as American too.、Um, there are many problems domestically here in U.S. that we need to fix, and it is just hopeless to wait for the establishment elite currently to fix those problems because, well, they are the problems themselves <laughs> if you dig deep enough. Okay, however. If you look at history, when a nation want to shift direction in a major way, it will harm the interests of many existing power, and they are not going to let go of their share of the pizza. Right? The thing is that power is a zero sum game. In order for President Trump to change things, he need to take power away from the current ruling elites, some of the current ruling elites, and people really need to get a deeper understanding of politics. Just because Trump got elected, it doesn't mean that power automatically goes to him and transfer to him. Power just does not work that way. Okay, this is why he's picking so many inexperienced. And almost strangers into his cabinet because he need to make sure that whoever he pick does not belong to the pocket of the current establishment. Okay, so it is hopeless to expect change unless Trump can really condense the power, and he cannot condense the power without taking power from others. This is a challenging and. Dangerous procedure. Okay, almost all Chinese geopolitical analysts over the past few days have directly or indirectly hinted that the security of, let's say, Trump or Elon Musk over the past few days,、uh, it, it might be an issue. Their security, personal security. Okay, people like Professor Jin even again made another video just recently in the past few days suggesting that. More bullets might be coming towards Trump and you know his team. So basically, Trump, in order for him to become truly successful and do what he want to do, he needs to learn from. He needs to learn from President Xi, okay, Xi Jinping. 
And in order to successfully, for example, um, fix the corruption in the Chinese army, um, Xi Jinping need to carefully remove those generals out of power before you know charging them with corruption, or else you're gonna have maybe a coup or rebellion on hand. And I mean, to say the least, maybe they will just you know flee to other countries with some sensitive national secret in their hands. So you don't want that to happen. So for Trump and Elon Musk, they're talented and smart in their own way, right? But when it comes to politics, you need to be, I dare to say, cunning, uh, ruthless, shameless sometimes, and decisive when challenging uh, the existing power, right? And by the way, this is the same everywhere, like I said. And I said it before, and I will say it again, there's really no transition of power in the United States over the past few decades. Um, the power of the US president has been reduced to almost nothing over the years. And, you know, just look at Biden and look how so many people funded and, you know, supported Kamala Harris and, you know, what Kamala Harris looks like, right? And Trump is trying to get some of those power back for sure. So I'm going to make a few assumptions here. Pay attention, okay? It doesn't matter if you are anti-Trump, pro-Trump, doesn't matter, okay? Listen to this. Uh, this is how I see it. In order to combat the existing establishment, the deep state, if you want to call it, the best and most logical strategy is to create your own version of the deep state. Think about it. That's actually true, to mirror how the deep state function in order to fight against it. Uh, to both combat them on the surface and in the shadow. That, that is the most logical way of approaching. I mean, I can talk about hours about how this works, but I mean, some of my audience can probably get some of the basic ideas from some of the Hollywood movies or something. So are we looking at the founding members right now of a new US deep state? The beginning of the American uh, Bolshevik party or something like that. Think of it this way, okay? In order to start an internal revolution, which it seems like Trump is heading towards that direction. You need, you need people that is absolutely loyal and also willing to do the dirty work to remove rivalry, okay? Existing deep state and bring in the new Trump ideology. You need people who's willing to do the dirty work, okay? You need someone like Who's the guy? Le Levante Beria. Um, he's like the secret police of uh, Stalin, right? He used to purge and cleanse political rivalries, opponents. And you need someone like, uh, the, who's the German guy? Hel Helmer? Is that his name? Who led the U SS secret police? When Xi Jinping came to power, there's someone like that in China who worked for the opponent of uh, Xi Jinping. So imagine how dangerous and difficult it is for Xi Jinping to maneuver that person out of power. Is that who Matt Gaetz is in relationship to Trump? Is that why so many Democrats and even Republicans are trying to keep him out of office? <laughs> I'm not sure, okay? You see, to take power away from others is a dangerous task, okay? And you need some Trump religious zealot to, you know, tip the balance in Trump's favor because right now the odds are against Trump, as you know. Anyways, I am living in United States at the moment, and that's something I'm concerned about. And I want the United States to fix the problems and take a different path towards uh, foreign policy. But I do not want people here to, you know, embrace extremism. So. It is something people fall for easily during hardship and change. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section. Okay, I'll see you guys in the next video.